Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 252. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Hello, welcome to the Dial H for Hero Clicks studio. Chris, as you can tell, is gone this week. My voice is starting to feel better. I had a couple of lozenges and uh, Ricolas and whatnot from last week, so. Thank you, everybody, for telling me to get the speedy recovery so my voice felt better. I'm very happy um, that I'm at 100% power right now. In the studio, we have a guest. Before I do that, I want to remind everybody at the beginning and the end of the show that there is a coupon code for Cool Stuff Inc. It is Dial 5, and you can go ahead and get 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. It actually does help. Like You might think 5% off isn't really that much, but when you stack it with your normal Cool Stuff Inc. like bonuses and stuff you get, like I was going to order, I think, 8 or so of these skeletons and they were going to be 40 ish bucks like almost 50 dollars since they're like five dollars each and it ended up being like 38 with the two per, with the five percent off saving me like two bucks and then with all the other like singles bonuses you get on cool stuffing so you can save a decent chunk of change with that so that's dial five at checkout but we do have a listener guest in the studio today it is simeon bruce all the way from omaha nebraska how's it going simeon Oh, it's going. That, <laughs> that's, so that's that's what, what I got. got. That's it. It's going. So, Simeon, I've got a few questions to ask you. Do you know? Uh, do you know how this this whole roundabout ring around the rosy goes? I'm going to start off with how and when did you get into Hero Clicks? Um, I got into Hero Clicks right after the Flash set dropped. Uh, I don't even remember when that was. That was like 2014, 2013, something like that. Um, I was at my local gaming store and I had been like looking for like statues and stuff. Cause I was like, I want to make my room look cool, but I have no money. And then I found all these tiny little statues and I was like, I could have like five dozen of these. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much how it went. You bamboozled yourself. You're like, Oh, they're so I did. small. There's no way they're as expensive. Yeah, I was like, this is inexpensive. And then like years later, so that here was we are. Lie. Yep. All right. So, what are some of your favorite hero clicks pieces and/or combos of figures to run? My favorite pieces are like really cheap garbage kind of stuff, like uh, like Molly Hayes from Secret Wars Battle World, the new Hydras we got, like the common and like generic ones, uh, stuff that like you can just run like six of them, and like you know that's not even half your build kind of thing. Have you run six Molly Hayes before? Yes, yes, I have. Awesome. It is disgusting, uh, and like, well, in in casual play, it's pretty gross because it takes like five damage funny. to kill her, Dude, and she can do her dial five damage long. on yeah. any click. She's so great. Uh, so typically, we're just rattling through these questions. By the way, are you more of a meta or casual player? I'm definitely casual. Like, nice. I can barely keep up with most meta stuff, but all my favorite build types are. Just like more cash. ridiculously casual stuff. What's your, what's your favorite casual scenario? Um, I like doing like high point games, like okay. not over like a thousand, but like the six hundred to like thousand point range is pretty fun because there's all these crazy figures that you never play in like the three hundred point games because like they just don't fit, you know. Like if it's like two hundred twenty two points. You're just like, I'm never going to use that. Oh, that was a very specific point value you referenced there. <laughs> who, who that could possibly be? There's a, <laughs> there's a figure. Yeah. Uh, then I also, I mean, I like like bizarro rules because it oh, makes people like think outside the box. You know, favorite, honestly, because there's so many like that, that what if Iron Man who's like yeah. stupid good, like bizarro rules are so awesome. I, that's probably one of my favorite game modes as well. Yeah. There's our rules in like reverse dials or like sometimes the combo of the two. No, it's hot. Bizarre rules are hot. They leave for some dumb stuff to happen. That's great. All right. 
What is your favorite format to play? So you, maybe you sort of answered that, but what is your favorite format to play? Um, probably like a limited, just like okay. cut down on like sideline stuff. And Makes finally, it easy for me. Ooh, hates that extra sideline. Maybe not hates it, but all right. What's uh, <laughs> what's your usual venue? Where can they find uh, the Bruce playing at every week? Well, Wednesdays I belong to the game shop in Bellevue. All right. But Thursday nights, we go to Krypton in Omaha. All right. That's Krypton Comics, right? Krypton Comics in Omaha on Center and 125th, right behind the IHOP. This is like <laughs> Iron Man 3. My home address is <laughs> a bunch of helicopters in there the next day, blowing it up. All right. Awesome, my man. I'm yeah. so glad we got to know you. We now know a little bit more about the man, the myth, the legend, the Bruce the guy who's a simian, but not a chimpanzee. Very interesting. Cool guy. Really, really cool guy. You forgot the most important part oh, about me, that? Calder, that? that I am your nemesis. Oh, that's right. Sorry. I totally forgot to introduce. But Simeon Bruce is, this is a nemesis podcast. This is Captain America and the Red Skull. This is like Elvis Presley in a toilet. This is the nemesis <laughs> podcast right now. This is just blood feud. Totally. I mean, my te- oh, I'm gritting my teeth every time I got to talk to this guy. Ugh. I literally always play the opposite team that you do. Almost you know, always, it seems. You like. play Sam Cap. Yeah. I play Cap Sam. You know, <laughs> that's just how we do it. Bizarro me. <clears throat> yeah. Red Lack Sen. <laughs> That's my name backwards for those listeners who are a little slow on the, the drop. All right, cool. So we're going to do what made us happy this week. I'm going to have Simeon start since his hopefully is not as long as mine. Uh, I got to do two pre-releases this week, so that was pretty, go- pretty good. Uh, I missed out on South Dakota States, but huge bummer. while you guys uh, – what's that? I said huge bummer. Really yeah, it was, it was pretty sad, but yeah. while I was missing out, I was at the uh, – the Infusion Brewery, going on a nice little tour, getting pretty drunk. So that was nice. Uh, what's that mean? It was like, oh, I wish that were me. So, all right. Fantastic. I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah. Did you have any, like, Did really you have good a good goals? time this week? I had, I, uh, I, had I right. thought I heard that you might have had a good time, but I, I can't. Um, I had an all right time. I ended up playing in South Dakota State. I was somehow able to make it, even though I live only an hour away from where they were playing it. And, um... Yes, yeah, somehow against all odds, I managed to actually win. Like I, I somehow beat seven. No, sorry, that's a lie. Six people. I had six wins, one loss, seven games, and I somehow won South Dakota State against all odds for no reason. Um, I was taken aghast by it uh, when I started. That's because I wasn't there. It was because Simeon wasn't there. If he, if that's he the only reason. Anti his his Earth C Captain America. Um, Absolutely. Pessimistic. I guess, you know, yeah. that non that planeswalker character. And then if he was running his uh under bike, you know, <laughs> with the um with the low fuel pog it spits out to carry the team. Yeah. And he was running his, his gog man, I was stood no chance. No oh, yeah. in hell. So but no yeah, I'm gonna go into my team really quick. It it would have been smart if I had it pulled up. Just because I'm gonna talk about yeah guys, come on. I finally won like a thing. Uh, the first time I ever won a tournament was actually Omaha Earth X pre-release sealed. That was the first time in my entire Heroclix career I'd ever won any kind of tournament ever, like taking home first place. This is the second time, and it happened like two months in the same like span. So I'm really excited. Ah, it's been, like three months, I guess. But I'm really excited that it happened. I'm stoked. If you can't tell, I'm stoked uh, because I ran a team that's very near and dear to my heart, even though I had to switch out uh, some parts. So what was my theme? Is Captain America Resilient? Uh, Samantha Cap, Overdrive, Mangog, Groot, that's the uh, the 20-point group, the leadership, and the walking woods, Wizkid, Fast Forces Giant Girl, the Venom Harness, Wolverine, Wanted Poster, Iceman, Faculty, Chamber, Student, and Cyclops Student with the Stark Tower location bonus. The overall, like, normal thing in my team. So the part I swift swatched, swatched, swipped out, switched out, switched out, yeah, that's what it is. That's the words. Words are hard, guys. The part I switched out was I had Bash Rock the Leaper on my team just because I wanted to make a million attacks in one go. Um, yeah, and I thought that was sick because he could also give Cap the Venom Harness. So 
yeah, that was awesome. Instead, switched out for Mangog and Giant Girl. Fast versus Giant Girl to have a better insurance policy in case my opening volley uh, messed up a little. So the basic theme was equip the Venom Harness to cap, get everybody in their places, uh, lose map because I had no theme to get my little Crimson Sage Pog. That's the entire purpose of the Stark Tower location bonus. Even if I won map, I would not put us on Stark Tower. I put us on the Let Them In map. Stark Tower is the worst. So... Basically, I got Cap equipped to the Venom Harness, and then I would carry up everyone with Overdrive. Cap, Whiskey gives everybody a plus one to stats, except for defense, just range attack damage, which is sick, right? Doing anything. So Cap would be, with the Venom Harness, he'd be a 14 for 5. With his Perplex, he's a 15 for 5 or a 15 for 6 with Battle Fury, which is pretty darn good. So Earth X Cap, I wanted to play him, because as soon as he came out, he was like my spirit click, and I freaking loved him so i'm really happy i was finally able to win a tournament and do really well with this earth x cap i just the thought in my mind of captain america just decking someone for six damage is sweet and then of course sam cap is calling in wolverine or something and just flurrying and going to town so i'm gonna get three attacks in a turn you know kind of my opening volley and then maybe going for the cyclops calling all that other stuff it's collins as you will and whatnot so my very first round, I was going against a younger kid. He's from Wakefield. They're a nice group of folks. Um, but he had a, he had an all Venom symbiote team with a Mangog and a few other characters. So I actually had to play this more carefully than I would some matches because although they all have shape change, I don't have to worry about that. But they also all have super senses on some of them. It was like the normal Venom, then it was Venom Spider-Man, and then it was uh, Venom Gwenpool. So it was actually a harder matchup. Even though, obviously, his, his dice totally abandoned him. He just, he couldn't hit anything. And I know how bad my dice are, which is why I put a prob on this team and made sure I could have at least a 13 or 15 attack most of the time. So yeah, won that game. Second game was against Jacob Marcus. Really great guy. Uh, shout out to Jacob. He was playing this Joker, Harley Quinn uh, team. It was all based around him getting the location map, which he definitely did against me he was playing the 100 point le joker the dark knight rises one and this was a tough game if you haven't noticed only two people on my team that aren't colossals have damage reducers so sam cap and the other captain america are totally susceptant whatever to joker's poison it was rough it was actually a really close game but in the end sam cap would just she was killing it she was actually the last one left alive most the amount of people that forget about to use captain america's prob even if i tell them is insane that's that's the bad part is when they kill title cap they forget to use that against me and that's where a lot of people you know fail even though i say like okay you killed him this is the title character ability i'll let them look at the cards first and all that jazz second game sorry third game of the day was against jonah fun fact in all of the practicing against like getting ready for this i've only ever lost to jonah he had a whales team with venom cap um which is gnarly i freaking love it because i love venom cap any version of captain america i'm all for but I do not like whales. It is not fun. Um, I roll every single time I played against Jonah. I've always rolled a crit miss on the first attack, and that's I think he has like domino style luck, bad luck around him, like aura. So this time I rolled a crit miss against his venom cap, probed it with the little pog. So my Captain America would hit him. I misplaced overdrive. I did not get the empower, and I forgot to perplex up Captain America's damage, and I did not one-shot his Venom Cap. It was a super close game. He called in Harley Quinn with a whale, and I didn't catch it until, like, it was, like, a few turns after that. I'm like, Harley Quinn's 60 points. What an idiot. So I am by no means a perfect player, but I did somehow manage to pull out a victory against you in another close game. Now, my favorite game in Swiss was against Kevin. And just so, just, I know I, it feels like I'm ranting here, guys. So, Simi, if you have anything to just bring up, just go ahead and interrupt me. It does not matter at all. Just because people are going to get tired of my voice eventually. Anyways. Yeah, I know, I know Kevin. Yeah, good old <laughs> <laughs> I know That's Kevin. That's what I got to add. Yeah, all right, nice. So, Kevin was playing another Sam Cap team, but this one had Pip the Troll, and it had uh, Shredder. And a few other things. It had a tank, it had more retaliation, stuff like that. So his team was different than mine, didn't have like the attack values and whatnot. I misplayed so hard in the very first turn. I kind of, I've only ever played against Sam Cap against Kevin. I've literally never played against another Sam Cap team except for States last year against Kevin and then States this year against Kevin. I've never played against Sam Cap, regardless of the fact that she is on pretty much all of my 300 constructed teams. Yeah, it's nuts. So 
I send my Colossals to the side to spread them out so Shredder couldn't get to them, even though they were already spread out enough. And I realized that I made them leap the starting area like an idiot, and I did my normal whole sidestep, get everything equipped. So he ran all the way up, double targeted, Mangog, Groot, and then the uh, charged up, since it was out of the starting area, he had to get to a token, you know, and I didn't sidestep it back in. And he was, tar auto he was tar triple targeting all of them with the 12 attack with the uh, Brood X. And I was like, great, I am going to be down, you know, potential to totally kill Overdrive in one turn, depending on what he rolls, you know. And then I'm going to be down Mangog and Groot at the start of this game. And he rolls a 5, which misses everyone. It only hits a 17. So since he targeted Mangog, like, so it completely went from, oh, I'm an idiot, I'm going to be down all these things right away in the game to, oh no, he completely missed, now I'm going to retile Mangog and wipe his entire team. Except, he hit Shape Change on the Brood X, so I couldn't target the person that targeted Mangog, so I think the retile just stopped. And it was like, well, that's a bummer. So it swung heavily both our ways, and then it was a slog fest the rest of the time. I managed to get Shredder and a few other characters. He dropped the tank on me. It was rough. He did not forget about Captain America's theme, uh, prob consolation prize thing so that was also a little rough to take so i did lose against kevin i did get 120 something points which was nice but our game was done in like 20 minutes like it was so i wish every hero quest game could be like that it's so fun to just boom 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 go back and forth and just play fast you know because once you're good with the team because i know he played a sam cap style team before and even though they're all different iterations and i'm technically also playing a sam cap team both of ours do something completely different so I loved that we could just play so fast. Uh, it was fast and furious. It was great. So then we cut with three and one and a lot of points. I pretty much wiped everybody else's team besides Kevin's. And then I got a good amount of his points. So I was guaranteed top eight with three and one. Um, I didn't know what seed I was going to be. I ended up being third seed. And I was like, well, I don't know how that matters, but okay. Uh, I ended up playing against, we also went to Arby's. It was pretty great. That was pretty good. A uh, little lunch break. Me, Jonah, and Kevin went to Arby's. Arby's is just, they have the meats, man. They have what did you have? I had a chicken cordon bleu. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. that odd sliced, choice. It is an odd choice. I like the I like the sliced ham in the sandwich, and um, different, like their uh, I don't know how to say it. Some of their beef sandwiches, even though I'm like a beef guy, they don't taste quite right. I'm, I'm I I prefer the cows I raise. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah. Same reason I don't like Taco Bell. That's not beef. That is that's just garbage. Yeah. And you've stuffed if I can't soft shell. if I can't walk out my door in the morning. And, you know, just thinly slice my own beef. I mean, why even wake up? Why, why even wake up? Why am I even here? What am I doing? So, yeah. Uh, and then my first match was against Ian. Um, he was awesome. He was great. He is one of Kevin's friends, one of Kevin's buddies. And he was playing a Black Panther with, what was it, Lockjaw, some Groots, and a Floor Colossus. That was his build, right? Um, right away, he didn't. Like, this is, like, <laughs> eye flares. And you'll see this on uh, Happy Little Hero Clicks. Devin, he filmed um, two of my matches in the top eight, which is really cool. So he filmed my one against Ian, against that Black Panther. And if you can, like, sort of tell, I'm really – I like to play with my dice a lot. Um, so once he um, didn't move Black Panther out of his starting area and left him there and first turn immunity was over and he didn't do anything with it yet, and uh, he completely forgot to put him in hindering terrain. And just, like, eye flares happened. I was like, Yes! So I call, I run up all the way up there. I do not let Cap do anything. I didn't want to get that close. And I still had to place Cyclops in Black Panther prob range, but I was feeling pretty confident. So Cyclops has precision strike and uh, penetrating second blast. So I was like, oh, don't roll a six. And we can like hit him for a ton of damage. Did forget to perplex up his damage value to a six. Once again, this is all my bad. I completely forgot to like do these perplexes right and get everything moved and whatnot. So he stopped short. I didn't one-shot him. I don't even know if you can one-shot him if you do six damage. Maybe. Can you? Do you know, Simeon? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you can, can, okay. can, can one-shot Panther with uh, Cyclops. Okay. So I didn't do that, and I'm sure there's going to be several comments on that video. Um, so, yeah. I did, in one video, I said, <laughs> to anyone listening to this and you see me make a mistake, I want you to email us at dialh4heroclux at gmail.com. Uh, so hopefully that makes it into the video. Just because, just tell me. Don't, don't comment on Devin's video. I want you to personally email us uh, any mistake I made. That goes for any listener out there. Go watch the video when it comes out, probably a week from now, and just email us and tell me how terrible I am at HeroClicks. And then I'll say, well, I'm a state champion, you're not. So. 
That's not a knock against our listeners. I love all of you guys so much. So, uh, yeah, I destroyed Ian's team. Uh, that didn't say destroyed. It was a good. It was a good match. I think at one point Lucas says, "Hey, you hit someone with Groot. So you got to spawn a walking wood." And he's the judge, so he can actually in- interrupt during games and say stuff like that. And just because he said it, I was like, "You know what? I'm not gonna spawn a walking wood." And then I won that turn. So that felt pretty good. Sticking it to the meat. Don't tell me what to do. I'm an American. Yeah. I got two Americans on my team. They're, they're all Americans, I guess. But America! That was basically the theme of my team. Captain America, boom! Long arm of the law, you know? That's awesome. Anyways, so that was that game. Next game was against Jonah again. This was a much uh, faster game. I one-shot him this time using the right powers, the right perplexes. Still had a good, like, 15 or so attack, which is awesome. So I was really happy with that. One-shot his Captain America. Which was sick with my Captain America. That's why I love the Venom Harness guys so much. Like, even though it's slightly risky, it's 50 50 chance that you're going to take a damage, I do not care at all. There were. There was no care in the world. I was just like, a boom, activate Venom Harness. Like, there's my catchphrase for the day. It was Cap's going to use the Venom Harness. Cap's going to use the Venom Harness. I don't care. Cap takes one. Do not care, all right? Because he's going to railroad you with freedom. And that's how it goes. So yeah, uh, beat Jonah again for the second time, and I was really antsy because it was Kevin and Tristan. Now, Tristan's one of the younger kids that plays in our group, but he was running full point unit mine, so 295 with the four, you know, Eternals and whatnot. So I was really, really scared. So like, against Kevin, it's me trying not to play like an idiot this time and basically see who gets to, you know, attack first. Like, that's it. Like, whoever wins map roll. He actually conceded map to me when we first did it, just so I wouldn't get the prob pog, which really kind of irked me a little bit. Not gonna lie, Kevin. So, uh, Kevin ended up losing. I felt, uh, it was the roughest game ever. He told me that he rolled three crit misses against Unimind, and he needed a nine once in order to hit. And a nine is, like, it's not impossible, especially when you consider I just rolled three crit misses. So if my luck can be that bad, it can be at least this good for once. And he didn't make that nine. And it was, it was that roll that made me go against Tristan. And, uh, another thing I did against Tristan, and this was the final top two, and I would have been... Hey, I was already happy, because if he would have won, I'd have been like, that's awesome. He's like, I'm going to butcher his age. He was like 14, 15, something like that. And like, if he would have won South Dakota State, I would have been so immensely happy for the guy. You have no idea. So that would have been sick. But I did end up winning. Spoiler alert. Sorry, guys. I I wanted to beat Unimind by popping Eternals and beating Eternals. Like, when I sat down with him, I was like, I want to beat him that way. Or I can spend a whatever, blah, 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 three point Cyclops ID, kill his four point symbiote. <sighs> it's boring. It's boring, guys. And then it's like, what? It's in my favor now? No, that's not how Americans win games. All right. Americans win games by beating their opponent into the ground. Hoorah! So, yeah, that's how I won. It was pretty great. Captain America is awesome. He was definitely the standout in that game. He was just boom, 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 just hitting you to mind. You to mind was healing, blah, 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 blah. You know, we had Wolverine call in. Wolverine only got to make one of his flurries in the very, like, opening volley, which really sucked because that shape change really sucked. So maybe I should have got rid of it. Do not care. Cap's got Battle Fury. And it's that kind of attitude that I love. Like, as soon as I didn't destroy the symbiote and I knew he was going to pick up next turn, I was like, someone's going to comment. Well, why didn't you destroy the symbiote? It's because that's not how Americans do it. Eventually, I popped Tina Mine, and eventually I killed them all. I was going to I was gonna just wait and keep clearing Captain America and have Captain America teleport to each... Uh, <laughs> to each um, Eternal and kill him that way. But I decided, no, let's just go home because I was wicked tired. That was probably the most tired I was driving back and uh, swerving on the interstate uh, to get back home. I was wicked toasted after that uh, after that game. But it was sweet. It was great fun. I am very happy that I won South Dakota State. The map is cool, but I was bummed it wasn't a movie map, which was the main reason I tried the first two, three years when I was going for South Dakota State was because those movie maps are awesome. So I'm just happy I'm a South Dakota State championship map. I want to thank everybody who said congratulations, everybody that said good job. This is, like, huge for me in my Heroclix career that I actually won a constructed tournament, so I was pretty excited about that. You know, the dice fell perfectly. I had my fair share of crit misses in the game. I had my, my fair share of bad luck, but I think the team is just really solid. And I'm really happy that that's how it went. So without further ado, uh, Simeon, if you have any anything to say about that, go for it. If not, we can go ahead and move into the news section. No, I think you covered uh, you beating up on children pretty well. It was I'm only real, three games. I'm, do you hear this? That's me slow clapping you. I really appreciate that, bud. Uh, <laughs> I really appreciate the sarcasm. <laughs> no, and I'm, I'm actually, you know, it's really nice uh, 
that people this year are able to win state championship matches instead of, uh, you know, what I won last year, which was a state championship match. So there's a little bit of difference in spelling, but. So what is it like being a Nebraska state champion? I mean, it feels like absolutely nothing. <laughs> Not going to lie to you. Every day I uh, I head to work and they, they look at me and they say, you know, it's not spelled right. And I just I just turn around and go home. Say better luck next time. Better luck next time. Well, hopefully this weekend, which is going to be Omaha's uh, state championship, hopefully you can win that one. I'm rooting for you, man. Without further ado, though, let's get into the news. So April Fool's Day was this week, or last week, which led a lot of people to not to not really know what to think of these previews. So we're not going to talk about them yet. And instead, we're going to talk about DC Rebirth and how that had its pre-release this week. Simeon, you got to play in two Rebirth sealed events for pre-release. Go ahead and tell us what your pulls were on that first game. Tell us a little bit about Oh, yeah. That. Oh, yeah. For sure. Uh my first one, I managed to pull two rares, so I was pretty excited. I got uh, Superboy, number 33, and Orphan, number 34. <clears throat> and uh, how much did you cry when you realized you pulled absolute garbage? I mean, I was a little upset, I'm not going to lie. The guy next to me pulled a super rare, Mr. Oz, which is one of the pieces that I was like, yeah, want that. And then he pulled uh, the Chase Devastator, which I was like, Ooh, nice. out of the Chase is not my biggest want, but also, I mean, it was a Chase. And then the guy in front of me pulled the Super Rare, super rare Deathstroke, who has the Speed Force. And then he pulled the Murder Machine. Mm. So I was I was surrounded by good pulls, and I just... I could just feel it so close, but so far away. So what, uh, what's your build end up being for that first one? My my build ended up being Superboy and Orphan. That's 150. I threw on the uh, Uncommon Artemis, I believe. Uh, she's 100 points. Orphan is actually super solid and sealed. Um, nice. There's not a ton of stuff that sees through hindering in this set. And she's got... Uh, Batman ally team ability. Um, she gets a plus one attack and defense for each opposing character she's next to. So most games I was just using Superboy's crazy high speed value to like run Orphan all the way up and plop her down next to like as many people as I could. And then her later dial, she has combat reflexes. So if they don't see through stealth, she's got like a 20 defense pretty much her whole dial, like if you position right. Um, Superboy is pretty solid. Uh, everything about my team was like, I didn't pull leadership, but I had Indom on every figure. So I was able to like make at least one attack every turn, which was pretty crucial. Um, but I ended up losing out to a super rare Clayface because that Clayface is pretty legit. Dude, he's awesome. I like him a lot. We did have some guy pull it here in South Dakota, and uh, that was pretty sweet. All right. Uh, just because you went to two, I'm going to go to interject with mine. Uh, how'd you end up going that night, though? One and two, two and one, three and oh. I did three two and, and one that night. Two and one? Yeah, nice. two and one. Lost the clay face, but. It'd be like that sometimes. Yes, it do. All right. So my sealed pre-release, I also pulled two rares. They were uh, Bumblebee and The Vic. I think that's her name. The Vic. Something like that. Oof. That's so rough. I decided I didn't even want to look at them at all. So I made my team completely out of commons and uncommons. I was very stoked, though. I pulled both Commander Steel and Steel. So I was like, the Haywood boys are going on my team. Anytime I can put a semi-patriotic-looking dude on my team, they're on my team. So I already had 130 points my team built up. The only question is, what do I fill out the rest? I pulled Mr. Terrific and his Terrific Balls. So I had to put him on the team, of course. And then just because I needed one more person with Indom and Outwit, I was like, we're going to put Batman on the team. 
So it ended up being a 285 point team. I had no, like, there's no 15 point figure in the set. There's no filler at all. Um, I did pull a Chinese Superman and he's good, but I'll, it'll be a cold day in hell when I play any character who's a Superman ally. So yeah, except for, unless it's Lex Luthor. That new Lex Luthor who's like a pseudo Superman ally, I really like that one. Because I like it when they make Lex Luthor a good guy. Because that's how he sees himself, and that's how I see Lex Luthor. Because Superman's just the worst. I'm not talking about it. The Haywoods, the Haywoods are great. The Haywood legacy, the whole deal one penetrating to people that hit him close up, was sick. The Haywoods, once we got in a later game, we got Shazam off of his Invincible. And it was it was a losing game for him at that point. I felt bad. The Haywoods put in work. I loved it. Uh, Mr. Terrific and his terrific balls. Oh, man. I love that man's balls. And that's been taking out Kansa so hard. But seriously, Mr. Terrific is awesome. You pull him, you should play him in Sealed. He's got stealth. He can hide in stealth. He can go and outwit people. Then he can send his balls out and just do whatever. You send one out, and it just uh, it just does things. And the other one perplexes his attack and his damage value. You know? Like, let's do it. Let's freaking do it with these terrific balls, my man. So I love Mr. Terrific. My entire team had Indom, or at least Willpower, in one way, which is really cool. Um, I did win my first game. Lost my second game. Um, turns out when people have stealth and I can't target them with my Outsiders or with my Outwit, it makes it really hard to take him down. That Deathstroke, that Flash Deathstroke, was just murdering my team. Um, he was doing range attacks and all that dumb garbage, so even though he wasn't getting Speed Force tokens, he was not. He was dispatching the Haywoods, and I only killed, um, I think it was Isaac who was playing against, so I only killed his Red Hood in that entire matchup. Really huge bummer. And then my Shazam matchup was honestly just like, how am I going to kill Shazam? And that's not a, that's not a knock against Luke. That's just like I really want to kill Shazam and I really want to make it happen. And I missed a ton of attacks because I I moved up. I was trying to do whatever, and I'm like, oh crap, he's never gonna move ever again. So he never moved. So he always had the um the Zeus tokens, and I had to get Batman. Oh up to yeah. Him. I had, I just I had to get Batman up to him in order to get the um ah what's it called the outsiders off by the way outsiders right. are my favorite team abilities ever made i really do yeah i'm so glad we got some more that like are i think this might be the first like modern outsiders there might have been a couple in joker's wild i guess yeah there were sure. yeah it was that, that but um, that black we got lightning. some decent oh, ones yeah these are good i thought like that black lightning is okay but every other outsider in that set was like over costed and just kind of bad so i had a great time this was a uh, my sealed i went two and one and at dinner that night, we were all hanging around talking. We were talking about states. And they were like, I would like to get where I got last year. Oh, I'd love to see myself win. And they're like, what about you? I'm like, ah, I just want to have fun. And I'm really happy I had that attitude going in. And I won states. Just saying, guys. Just saying. All right, that's enough of me talking about states. Simeon, you played one more pre-release. Tell us about it. All right. So you remember the piece that I lost to in my first pre-release? It was Clayface, the right? Clayface, yeah, man. So in my second pre-release, I uh, I pulled Clayface, and I was like, you know what, this thing sucked, so I'm totally gonna play this. He's got Batman Ally, so he's in stealth until like the last half of his dial where he can choose to not be. Um, right. He it's like giant or whatever, but the dude can pump out like six damage with a flurry. Three of that can be penetrating. The other three, he can give someone an action token. So he's, like, crazy good for sealed. Uh, Invincible and shape change, which is, like, a great combo as well. I pulled him. I pulled the uncommon Batman that, like, it has, like, super stealth, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, lines of fire can't be drawn to him for, like, anything as pretty as much. there's anything in the way, like, water, hindering, obscuring elevated stuff like that so just yeah still place him in hindering like how stealth works but it's it's better yeah so i pulled him he's got outsiders uh he's got justice league which i never once gave a like cared about whatsoever speed on charge man (laughs) come on i was like nope don't need that but (laughs) outsiders is absolutely crazy because i ended up going against one of those chinese supermans the jlc superman and he's like, I'm going to bump my da- my defense up by two, and then this guy's going to perplex my defense up by another one. And then, like, my turn came, and I was like, I'm going to outsiders you. <laughs> so all of that's gone. Like, don't even worry about that. Uh, I pulled the common prime signal. Oh, yeah. Who, I don't know if you saw that, but he's got, like, this thing where he can 
make people see through stealth, including your friendlies. He's mm-hmm. he's a very like all around piece all where right. he helps your opponent just as much as you, so it's very hard to like position him correctly. But the big thing is he's sixty points and he's got prob front loaded. Nice. Which in sealed, like you can't put a price on support powers, so I pulled him and then also uh the cyborg. I played him at fifty points. Oh, nice. And so you know, if I positioned correctly, I could have uh Clayface flurry for four damage penetrating and then like another four damage, or if they had invincible I'd flurry for four and then flurry for four penetrating. So I did pretty, pretty okay that time. What did you end up being then? I ended up uh, taking the win. All right. I went up against a Chase Red Death with uh, Raven and one of the Kane ladies. I don't know. She was like the support one with PD and stealth top loaded. Oh, Uh, So that was the only time I used that common prime, the signals uh, take people out of stealth thing, because he actually had figures that were, like, in stealth. So that was, like, the one and only time I actually activated that, because three of my figures had stealth. So I did not really feel like doing (laughs) it, but I ended up taking that down. Um, There was a team with the, the JLC Superman, a Wonder Woman... And a Tempest, and that was like pretty rough, but I ended Tempest, up like that is one of my all time favorite Shakespeare plays. Very cool. Glad <laughs> you finally got a hero click. No one's gonna get that reference. Abs- absolutely, yeah. Pride and Prejudice. Can't wait till that comes out on Clicks form. Also, not a Shakespeare play, but that's cool. Let's just keep it rolling. <laughs> hey, Jane Austen could have been Shakespeare. Ah, uh, you, know? you know what? I think Mary Shelley's got a bigger, better chance of being Shakespeare or Frankenstein than Jane Austen does. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Old dead authors aside, uh, I'm glad you had fun in your pre-release. I'm glad you won your pre-release. I hope everybody yeah. else had good fun. If you guys had sweet polls in your pre-release, let me know. If you didn't pull a great team but saw someone else pull just a sweet team that they made, also let me know. Like Lucas, <laughs> uh, listen to the show. He not a listen to the show. Whatever. He's just a dude, really. He pulled um, a Devastator and um, the Hero of the Beach guy, Flex Metallo, and like that is the sickest team ever because it's big beefy dudes, man. It's awesome. So yeah, Devastator Flex Stealth. He did not win, um, and, but I still thought it was a sick team. Like, that's just hilarious, man. Honestly, it'd be a hard decision for me to play Devastator at full points. Like, there's just so much support available in this sealed oh, yeah. where, like, I could perplex him down to, like, a 17 and outwit his invincible and then just, like, hit him like crazy. I was honestly, the entire time, was I really hope I went up against him because I'm like, Pff, outwit charge, outwit whatever outsiders, you know, Devastator, if they perplex him or whatever, and they just go to town with all my close combat pieces. Like, he would be not a problem against my team. Maybe. That's just how I'm thinking. But I'm just saying, between... Well, plus it's... And and I mean, if whatnot, you know Lucas, I mean... Yeah, it's so he's playing. He's, he's playing two pieces work. that require him to roll dice. That's true. The guy's not good with dice, folks. You would think <laughs> Plastic hates him. It's pretty... We terrible. love you. We love you, Lucas. I don't. Anyways, okay. no, I do. So much love. Seriously, Lucas is great. He's an awesome guy. And he did host South Dakota States. He did all this work, all this planning and everything. So really, just big shout-out to Lucas. You know, he was awesome. He gave, like, people special stuff. Like, for the first crit miss of the day, he gave someone a Blackbird. Like, that's awesome, you know? That's pretty sweet. So the rest of the news, we're not going to talk about the LEs yet. I'm going to cover some stuff that popped up that I totally forgot about the notes. There's a Public Enemies Bullseye OP kit. Bullseye has a new sculpt. The Daredevil and Punisher are the what-if sculpts, which means I already hate WizKids for making... Like, I don't hate WizKids. I know they're going to reuse sculpts. I just wish it wasn't those sculpts. Like, please, right. just use the Rocket Launcher Punisher and any other Daredevil ever. Is it the Punisher holding the machete, the but machete. he's got, like, six range yeah. and running shot or something? I just... That machete, I don't like it. I do not like the Punisher with the machete at all. So that was one of the kit announced... Daredevil's holding, like, the long pointy stick thing. It just, it makes this cane look so bad. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Um, there's that. There is a brand new... So these all look like sort of new sculpts. I have never seen this rogue before. I think it's just the uncanny one, though. So there's the X-Men Empowered monthly OP kit. If not all these ladies have Empower, I'm just I'm just going to call WizKids on it. What are, you, what are you doing naming it this? So we got a new rogue with her new outfit. 
I think it may, maybe it's the Uncanny Rogue. I honestly didn't. I've never it seen is it before. the it super is? rare. Okay, okay yep. sweet. Um, then we got a Phoenix, not jumping out of fire or anything, but like jumping out of water. So that's, yeah, that's also neat. the super rare. I, okay, that was all super rare. I see. I don't know X Men at all, so that's. Crazy. I didn't buy any of that set, but like, yeah. This guy just. I mean, I wasn't playing weekly, so at least you knew. Um, and then the storm is a new sculpt, right? Like, I'm not wrong with that one. That's totally a new sculpt. Ab- yep, that is okay. absolutely a new storm. We did it. So yeah, that storm is like a queen of Wakanda looking storm. Yeah. I think like that's what I'm. I think her about. name is like Aurora T'Challa, which would mean like, in the comics, it's like after. Like they got married and she became like the the matriarch of Wakanda or whatever. Nice. Or maybe it's the storm where did you ever see the Wolverine and the X Men animated show? That was like had one season. Ooh, like, like the two thousand four or something like that. That was two thousand four. That was X Men Evolution. It's like two thousand seven on Nickelodeon okay. or something like that. Anyways, Ooh, it maybe. was like a really weird flat animation and it was after Xavier's school just completely gets destroyed. They did a episode on Storm and it was about how she was like an African goddess of this local tribe because she would bring rain and stuff when there was drought yeah. and whatnot. So like that was a really cool episode and that's kind of how she looked in that one too. Um so maybe it's that it's probably gonna be a Wakandan related one because that's easier. Um also we gotta see sculpts and what the Orville is gonna be. Apparently they're saying it's a two player starter set. It's gonna come with all eight of these amazing figures. We got a blue guy in a shirt, a blue girl in a shirt on her phone, a blue alien guy in a blue shirt. We got a maroon reddish reddish lady and she's she's throwing hands. Alright. Then we got a green, I'm just going to say doctor. Doctors have satchels and stuff, right? So I'm going to say green doctor lady. We got um, dude in a suit trying to look like a robot because we don't have the budget to CGI an actual robot and all that stuff. So he's just in a suit. He's uh, clearly wearing clothes, the metal helmet, but he's a quote unquote robot. You know, TV's great, folks. And then we got dude in an orange suit with his phone out. And then we got a uh, dude in an orange suit also looking like he has a phone out and his hands like crooked but i can't see what's in his hand so i don't know what he's doing they have great pants though i like the lining the orange lining is so cool double checking wrestlemania here really quick looks like kobe kingston versus dana bryan really could not care less about that match gonna get hate for that don't does not matter dana bryan can go uh eat a butt and kobe kingston i i couldn't care less i mean i guess i'm going against dana bryan but come on new day new day uh yeah new day all the way but like kobe kingston is not my favorite member of new day just i'm sorry kofi i'm sorry i know like they're rooting for him really hardcore sorry for anyone who does not care about wrestling but i i'm like i like the new day they're awesome but like really big beefy dude and trumpet dude are definitely better and i'm sorry i don't know <laughs> The only reason I know Kofi's name is because they say it every single week. Like, that's it. Um, oh, yeah, he's the push of the group, that's for sure. They're really pushing him hard, and I really couldn't care less. I like the trumpet dude more. He looks cooler. No offense, Kofi. No offense, Kofi. I know it's like, woo It's the whole Daniel's the heel, Kofi's the, you know, the face and whatnot, but I, I don't care. I'm sorry, guys. I don't care. Also, I don't care about Seth Rollins. Anyways, so, uh, bad wrestling aside, someone was like 15 seconds, skip, 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 to get past that, just to see when we got back to Hero Clicks. Another thing that was previewed this week was the pre comic book day Iron Man figure. I, uh, I was hoping they would do something like this. Um, I was hoping it would be DC, actually, because we had a lot of pre comic book day Marvel characters, and it feels like that's the majority of them over the years. But the cool thing to note about this Iron Man is that he's on a gold base. So if they start doing that, you know, maybe that's just going to be their thing when they do special figures and no longer chases. I don't know. This like there's so much that you can say about it, but it's cool. It's the 18. Nope, sorry, it's literally right there. 1872. I was about to say 1802, like 1602. Anyways, it's the 1872 The Valley Iron Man, which is cool. Like, but that Iron Man was already really good, so we just got a higher point version of this Iron Man. Yeah, the main set was like a rare could charge quake. And then he could shoot at somebody that he, like, knocked back or something like that. Yeah. I think you could just, like, make a ranged attack, but not somebody that he hit. So, the main set one was pretty cool. This one's, what, 75 points? He is, like, 120-something and then 75 points. Oh, okay. So, I mean, he starts with energy explosion. He moves on to this new power, uh, Sidori Step. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I really love that new power, Sidori Step. What do you think it's going to do, Simeon? Oh, I imagine it's going to, like, maybe move you, like, two squares. Two and then, squares? Oh, and then, squares. like, when a new player says, like, hey, what's this? You'll have to explain to them what quality control is, you know? 
I, I imagine that's what it's for. Oh, sweet. So every time that we use this power, and you know new players are going to be using it because they're going to get it for free on free comic book day. Oh, yeah, this is what brings new players to the game. This is what brings new players to the game because every time free comic book day comes around, there's a huge influx of players who are trying to figure out why they got this hunk of plastic. It's insane. So you're saying every time I use this power or they use this power, I'm going to have to explain. That's really cool. I'm glad they put that in the rule book. Yeah, I'm they'll be like, they, they understand what is Sidori Step? Exactly. You'll say, well, Sidori Step is quality control, and then you'll have to open up a ye olde time you know, book and show them what quality control actually is. Very nice. It's almost like WizKids is letting them know what they're in for the long haul. I really appreciate that. I really like that transparency that WizKids is having nowadays. Beautiful. I really I really do like the flavor text on this, though. It is actually um, really good. His outwit is like, yeah, I'm Tony Stark. Yeah, and then it <laughs> goes to funny. Perplex, where it says, still Tony Stark here. <laughs> so, I mean, it's great. you don't get better than that. No, uh, he gets lumbering into the fight, which makes you think, when you think of, like, lumber, you think of, like, Solomon Grundy or, like, Hulk. But that's for running shot, so, I mean, you know. I just imagine, uh, like, because this is very reminiscent, like, the Mark One armor. It's just a big, beefy Iron Man suit, right? So it's like him trying to move around in that in the first Iron Man movie is so, like, hard oh, yeah. to watch. Because he's like a little metal man, like, chunk, chunk, chunk. It's like if the Mark I uh, was, like, on fire all the time. Yeah. So I can imagine him trying to run as fast as he can with all that metal. Like, do, 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 you just hear these loud footsteps, then, pfft. Face full of fire. Nice. Yeah. As far so, yeah. as sculpts go, though, that's probably one of, like, the most solids that they could have, like, chosen oh, yeah, from that set. For sure. Like, they chose that Hulk for the for the figure last year, and that was an amazing sculpt. So, yep. that was cool. I'm it's stuff that, that people are actually going to look at and be like, hey, yeah. that's something I know, and it's cool. Totally agree, my man. So, we put them off long enough. Do we want to talk about these these Khan Ali figures? They ended up, yes, they are not April Fool's pranks. Even though that dupe really made me feel like that this was a really elaborate joke, WizKids is playing everybody. So you want to start us off with uh, what was one of your picks that you want to cover here in the con exclusive figures? One of the figures you're most excited for to win um, or not win and pay $175 for on the second. I'm not even. I'm not even. <laughs> I'm not even going to go like the excited route. I'm going to go like this stuff will be played in the competitive kind of route. Uh, the Batmobiles. Both the controlled and the regular. The regular one kind of goes like the route of Alpha Strike, where if you have, I think it's Batman family keyword, you can be placed inside as a free action. Um, it's got like all kinds of stuff. Let's see here. Oh, you get willpower, charge, running shot, but only if Batmobile has a pilot. When it uses running shot after resolutions, you may place its pilot adjacent to the target of that attack. So you could, like, pop in that rare Batman from Batman Animated Series in here. You get running shot up. You could spit him out. He can make his free range attack with his battering, and then he can power action to make another attack because he hasn't been given an action this turn. So that's like all kinds of crazy options for that. The controlled Batmobile, it's got that RAM ability. A lot of these vehicles, we're bringing the RAM ability back, which is just, uh, it's like charge, you ignore characters, you make a close attack targeting everything you move through, locked damage value of three. So it's great for killing like retaliators and stuff like that. Oh yeah. The controlled Batmobile, after you use the ram ability or while you're using the ram ability you can actually change directions like mid movement so it becomes kind of like a pseudo hypersonic for it so if you combine that with like some buffs to speed and like maybe that nick fury rare that lets you move like half speed for free this thing could literally like wipe an entire starting area i mean like hit everything in a starting area for three damage in one turn and that's for 50 points, that's pretty crazy. Thanks. I hate it. Anyways, <laughs> moving on to my pick, which is not as crazy, is uh, only because this figure is just so iconic. And it makes me think about one of my least favorite towns in South Dakota, Sturgis. Uh, I'm going to be talking about dupe. People that know about Sturgis, um, it's not a knock against bikers. It's a knock against how many freaking bikers are on the interstate. 
when I'm trying to go places and I'm just terrified I'm going to hit one because they are just, they hide. They hide so well in the blind spots. Anyways, Dupe and the Tiger going for a road trip. This is, I thought this was fake. I, I honestly, I, I said so there's no way this is real. But now that it is real, I have to own it because it's Dupe riding a chopper and it's got like American, uh, like stars and stripes on the gas tank. Ugh, it's so sick. And there's a tiger sitting on the, it's just, it's awesome. So Dupe has X-Force, X-Men, x statics and animal I'm pretty sure it's ecstatics not x factor it would make more sense if you had ecstatics anyways he has no special combat symbols he has no range he's 60 points top six clicks his powers are sidestep or sidor step um or and he has toughness on his top six clicks no attack power no damage power he has 17 defense that entire time for those six clicks two damage the entire time for those six clicks his his attack goes down from 11 to a 10 on the last half of those six clicks six clicks six clicks six clicks not gonna say it anymore and then his his speed varies on his last two clicks of life on his dial he gets magic sky booger which is earthbound neutralized so it wrecks the motorcycle but also he has no special combat symbols so the earthbound neutralized is totally flavor which is fun i still like that they put earthbound neutralized on figures that it does not affect at all just because it's cool he also, oh sorry, I guess he's a trait. We're gonna read his trait really quick. I didn't go into special powers, so that's fine. Easy Rider with a tiger. Ah, oh, I love it so much. When Dupe uses it, so see inside, really quick, he can use RAM, basically. It says when he uses RAM is pretty much what it is. When Dupe uses it, when Dupe uses it, instead of dealing Dupe's pretty damage value, which is only a two, roll a d6 for each hit character and deal them damage equal to the result so instead of dealing them two damage i'm sorry guys i'm like blah, 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 blah. that's all folks really badly today so instead of dealing like a lame two damage you roll a d6 for everybody hit you can deal six damage or you know maybe you'll deal them one or you'll deal them you know five or four like either way more than two you have pretty good odds of getting more than two so that's pretty sick all right and then for each a character deal them damage equal to the result blah, blah, blah. so that's when he uses ram right and now, on his last two clicks, he has a special attack power and a special defense power. His attack goes to a 9, his defense goes up to an 18, and his damage value jumps all the way up to a 4. His attack is, I think he's upset about Sugar Mama, penetrating Psychic Blast with a range value of 8, free. This turn, replace Dupe's attack value with the printed, sorry, printed speed value of an imposing character within 8 squares. So, if they have hypersonic speed, something dumb like that, Dupe could have like a 14 attack value. Now this is late in the game. So since it's based on their speed and not on their attack, some people might only have a 10, which is still better than a 9. Some people might only have a 7 or 6 speed. But if they have an 11 or something, that's really solid. That's pretty, you know, normal to have. So that's cool. His defense is stop when this power is first revealed. Generate a tiger bystander. The tiger has no special combat symbols, no range. It has charge, 8 speed, 10 attack with blades. 16 defense with toughness, 1 damage. So, the tiger jumps off the bike, and Dupe's just pow-pow, shooting people. And uh, the name of his special power, his defense is, you done reach the end of the line. His toughness is made in the US of A. I just, there's, there's so much I love about this figure. It's going to be a really niche piece for some people. I don't even, I don't own a single comic with Dupe in it. I could care less about Dupe, but I love this motorcycle tiger thing road trip we got going on so that is why i'm excited for that figure i don't know what's purchasable honestly i didn't pay that much attention to the article so if i gotta win him or purchase him doesn't matter i love him i just love him man all right simeon i can't Next. wait to bust that out in like golden age Dude. and like leave casey flash for last so when i hit that stop click i'm like hey i'm gonna take that 17 attack thank you very much Ooh, yeah don't mind if i do Imagine All right, doing it figure... like against who's the other flash? It's like the bucket head flash at a twenty speed, really early, like oh early yeah, yeah, game. that'd be awesome. Yeah, even like that new Superboy with that like fourteen oh, yeah. top dial. Exactly. I mean, like that's just nuts. Um, and he's got four damage, so he doesn't even have to worry about like invincible. He can still punch some damage through. All right, the figure that I think most people are gonna be like he and and Holland for and all those like I don't know. Calder, what kind of noises do you people make? Uh, yeah, some of that kind of stuff. Anyways. This is a Phoenix Force Magneto. 
comes in at 250, 200, or 125 points. We currently have two ID cards to call this guy in. He comes in with protected end cap, mind control, opposing TK. Really don't care about two of those. Mind control, maybe, I guess. Uh, when he's KO'd, all friendly characters with the Phoenix Force keyword modify values plus one this game. That'll be great for, like, you know, when you play, like, 2,000-point game with, like, OG Phoenix Force and this guy. Yeah. But honestly, like, other than that, like, the Cuckoos are the only thing of, like, a low enough point value where you'll ever use that. Uh, he starts with this attack power no matter what starting line you put him on. Nice. And it is, I am fire and life incarnate. Penetrating psychic blast, pulse wave, TK, knockback. When Magneto damages one or more opposing characters with an attack, after resolutions, heal him and each adjacent friendly character one click. So this guy's a monster. You call him in on top of elevated and you pulse wave some people off. They're going to take the one damage if it's a multi-target or... The minimum they will take is four, because that's what his starting line damage is on all of his clicks. Uh, then they will also take two from being knocked back off of that elevated. So that's pretty nuts. Uh, at the end of his dial, he's got a stop click. Uh, when Magneto is KO'd, after resolutions, deal three damage to all characters within range and line of fire. So if you call this guy in, like let's say you call him in at 125, I figure that's pretty common unless you're playing like black panther you'll call him in at like 250 but let's say you call him in at like 125 you get outwit you get pulse wave pensai tk knockback whichever one you choose and then if they decide to try and kill him he's got a stop click and if they hit him off of the stop click he's going to deal three more damage anyhow so that's just crazy he's got power cosmic X-Men team ability, decent stats the whole way down. This guy's pretty solid. Dude, I love him a lot. I'm not even a fan of the Phoenix Force, but I really liked this What If comic. Because it was oh, sweet. Yeah. Like, Master Magnetism and he has the frickin' Phoenix Force. It's dope. What I don't get is why his real name is Max Eisenhart. Like, we got Magnus as his real name sometimes. We got Eric Leshner, and then we got Max Eisen. Like, what? Pick a name, dude. And maybe Wolverine's guilty, too, with the whole James Howlett or Logan or blah, blah, blah. But, like, what's the X-Men? Just choose a name, guys. Just choose one. Come on. But well, you know, like, every, every generation, they've got to, like, redo their backstory. So, like, go Max. He wanted to leave that, like, that German name behind. So I'm going to go with that. Like, his Eric is so German. Well, it might be. I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy German. I don't know. Okay. I'm Eric literally just with a K, up. excuse you. So yeah, it is German. So anyways, the figure I'm most excited about, and the one kind of everybody speculated, I know me and Chris, when we first saw Avengers BC, we were like, how sick would it be if there was a Ghost Rider on a Mammoth, and he was like a duo base. And I'm pretty sure, you know, I said back then he'd be a con exclusive if they ever made him. Just saying, but a lot of people also said that this guy would be a con exclusive and stuff like that. So I'm not saying that I'm copying anybody. I'm not saying they're copying me, but I'm just saying I said it first without anybody else telling me anything because I was at Origins the whole weekend and I didn't really use my phone that much. Just saying <coughs> <coughs> that I'm right. <coughs> Anyways, so we did. We got Ghost Rider, who's from Avengers 10,000 whatever million BC. Great movie. Really liked it. They really chucked Spears super far in that movie. Seriously, go see 1,000, 10,000, whatever BC, anytime you can. He has Avengers, Animal, Brute, Mystical, and Past keywords. He has a really cool Colossus Retaliation that's not really cool at all. It's actually kind of terrible. It's Power. If no friendly character has been placed this turn, uh, choose an opposing character that KO'd a friendly character since your last turn. And if it occupies the same row or column as Ghost Rider, place Ghost Rider in any four squares in the same row or column, that that, char that consists of both Ghost Rider and the chosen character. Make a close attack targeting all characters occupying the rows or columns between Ghost Rider uh, when he began this action and its current square. Regardless of adjacency, hit characters each dealt two penetrating damage instead of normal damage. So, like, it only works off KO'd characters and not target Ghost Rider or, you know, damage-friendly characters. And it's the whole row, column thing. It's, it's so many... Like, it's cool. Two penetrating damage is awesome, but also... The Atom does the same thing, and he's, at a, he's got a 15-point line, and he makes everybody ignore all sorts of stuff when he does it. So, 
yeah, that's kind of a bummer. I mean, I'm glad he got Colossal Retaliation, but this is a power action and all that stuff. It's just, it's kind of nerfed into the ground. He's 300, 200, or 100 points. His 300 point line is, they all have the same powers, which is really cool on these lines. So I can just say 300 points for five clicks has Hypersonic, Penetrating Psychic Blast. That was a lie. Precision Strike, that pink power, and Probability Control, that whole five clicks. Next five clicks, 200 point line, Charge, Quake, Impervious, Exploit, nice. Next five clicks, 100 point line, Sidestep, Poison, Invulnerability, and Close Combat Expert. So that's really cool. It's really simple. He has a giant damage symbol. He has or Big Fist, whatever. Tombstone, for those other listeners out there. Uh, he is Indomitable, and he's a mystical figure. He has another trait. Before Vengeance, opposing characters then three squares can't use Pulse Wave and deal normal damage instead of penetrating damage. So his uh, his Invincible, sorry, his Impervious and his Invulnerability are really going to go a lot farther than they will. So he's not going to get one shot. Sorry, his last dial is actually six clicks long. I totally lied there. So for 100 points, he's not a five-click dial, which is really nice. He also has another trait, which is basically the same trait that all the other Avengers BC had. It's the Ancient Incarnation Ghost Rider. So when another friendly character named Ghost Rider hits, after resolutions, remove an action token from Ghost Rider. When another friendly character named Ghost Rider is hit, after resolutions, give the attacker one penetrating damage. It's really sick. So I really like this Ghost Rider. Not for competitive or anything, but he's going to be a beautiful, he's going to be the most expensive figure. Like, I think that's probably going to be a fact. Whether or not he's competitive or not, if someone somehow figures out a way to break him, I don't know. But he is going to be probably the most expensive. A, his sculpt is beautiful. Like, I know it's a 3D digital rendering, but, like, it's a mammoth that's on fire, guys. It doesn't yeah, get... How, how do you get that wrong? <laughs> yeah, how do you get that wrong? It's pretty tough. So it's a really sweet sculpt. So that's going to be a big drive for a lot of people to complete the chase sort of theme that they have. That's a big drive for other people. Ghost Rider fans, blah, 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 all sorts of stuff. So that's going to be wicked, wicked sought after. Um, anything else you want to talk about here, Simeon? Yeah, I mean, he's got Avengers, so I'm sure that, like, we'll do some, like, not-so-competitive, like, higher-point builds where he'll make it on. I just really wish his opposing characters within three squares can't use Pulse Wave. I wish that trait said, protected Pulse Wave. Like, I don't know if it's, like, you can't trigger it, so, like, you can't, you know, take this trait away. But just for me, for, like, simplifying it, that would have been nice. Um, oh, right. do, you even, do you even know what I'm talking about right there? Yeah, you say, like, they have to be within that three squares first. Yeah. yeah they both, so, like, running, shotting up, ignoring it. Yeah, yeah or, like, Iceman, it. like, just sidesteps out of that oh, three right. squares. Also, you know, I mean, so, yeah. there's so many, like, things. But also, like, if I think for 100 points with, like, his stats and his abilities, if they just would have straight up gave in, like, given him, uh, he takes normal damage instead of penetrating that would have been fair. Like okay, yeah. that would have made him a lot better in my opinion. I would have liked that. For sure. For sure. Also no Ram. He's, he's pretty much a vehicle. Give him Ram. Yeah. But like, that's sort of what the, whatever thing is for, right? The retaliation. Cause it's yeah. Like, cause the, cause it is an animal, not a vehicle. Technic. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Yeah, I guess so. But is the cowboy saying this? He uses a horse as technically a vehicle all the time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can see the hypocrisy where you guys might be coming from, but a horse is not a vehicle. It is you a... ain't never ridden a mammoth, boy. Yeah, it's also true. I've never ridden anything close to a mammoth. Thank goodness. So, yeah. So, that's it. There's also uh, some mansion rings. we got to see more of those. We don't have all ten yet, so that's neat. Uh, we got to see Raven, Bombshell Raven. we got to see Kyle Rayner. He's not the Lancer I care about or care uh, the least about. No, he's the one I care the least about. That's right. Uh, we also got to see Lilandria, whoever she is. we got to see a really, really solid Lobo. Like, even though I'm not talking about him right now, I'm going to try to get, win, buy, whatever, this Lobo. It's awesome. This is a really cool Lobo. I don't own a comic with Lobo in it. I don't care. Lobo is just one of those characters that's just really sick. Like, he's a, he's a space biker dude. Like, Lobo is awesome. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lobo was, like, designed to make fun of Wolverine. So they were like, what if we took, like, this, like, anti-hero that Marvel has and we, like, blew him up into some sort of ridiculousness? And that's why he's, like, calling people, like, weird names and stuff and, like, flying around with apparently some form of dog. It's a special alien dog. How neat is that? I, that's yeah, pretty neat. Apparently it's... But Dude, I'm, I'm glad questions. they're bringing back stuff with, like, you know, 
We got the Batman who laughs with the Robin that attaches. Oh, yeah. We're getting this uh, Lobo with, like, the D-A-W-G that attaches. So I'm glad that we're doing, like, more of that stuff at least. That's awesome. All right, so that is it for news this week, which means we can go ahead and jump right into Community. All right, so for community this week, we asked how how amazingly uh, great of a <laughs> segue is this with the announcement of and spoilers of the upcoming con LEs. Are you excited about them? Which ones are your favorites? Which ones are you skipping? We asked a lot of people. A lot of people answered. So instead, I just tallied up all of the um, pretty much. I counted this pretty much as a vote one, just because of so many answers. I don't want to go through and read this. It's already going to be a long-winded podcast, anyways. What can I say? I talk a lot when Chris is gone. He's uh, he's not here, so might as well play him, whatnot. So, who do you think got the most, quote-unquote, votes for Simeon? Like, which figure do you think everybody overall was excited for? Oh, man. This isn't this isn't including the free comic book day Iron Man, right? 100% not including free comic book oh, day Iron Man. This is just I, the con. That would have been my guess. I'm going to go ahead and say it's uh, the Phoenix Magneto. Because he just looks crazy cool. Albeit, Phoenix Manito did come in strong with five votes across. You guys might think this is, like, really low, but there were a ton of figures spoiled. And some people just said, like, one ring or something. So, yeah, they're, just because of how many figures were spoiled, they're all going to seem low. But between the answers, there's a lot of answers. But Manito had five votes. The winner overall was Lobo with seven votes. He definitely popped up the most with people's voting. Um... Uh, kind of a sad, so sad, too bad. Kyle and Dupe are second, kind of tied for second to last place with only three votes each. The Rings had five, Raven had five, Ghost Rider had five, and Batmobile, and of course, like I said before, Magneto had five votes. The only figure to not have any votes was some chick named Lalandra. From the, uh, the X people thing. From the thing. something. It's like X-Men, but like space... Yeah, characters. they're bird people. Yeah. Or, you remember the, the bird people from the Boy, X people. I sure I sure don't. Gee go That's, gosh, Mr. Bruce. Man, do I like things that uh <laughs> Yeah, I can't even Just, I can't like, even say no a single cares. nice like, thing maybe, about maybe it. Maybe there's an there's probably a few X Men fans, but they didn't comment. So my takeaway from this is that literally no one cares. <laughs> So yeah, that's our uh, Dial H community question. Now, in um, in the other community stuff, which I normally forget, but I'm gonna go ahead and read Jedi Legends tip of the week. Now, because we were not doing this, and I totally forgot about it last time I was in charge of the show, I do not have a whatever thing to play when I read Jedi Legends. So it's the Obi Wan Kenobi thing. So I'm just gonna say hello there. And now, because <clears throat> that's the only quote from Star Wars I know by heart. Anyways, Jedi Legends Hero Clicks tip of the week. You can pull an opponent or your ally out of close combat with TK as it places them elsewhere. No troublesome breakaway roll required. For some reason, I feel like I roll breakaway more nowadays than I used to. I don't know why. It just feels like I'm breaking away from characters more often. I, I really, I honestly have no reason. Number one, that Captain America team, Cap's got to be able to move one square, which is a godsend when he has space and teleport later in his dial, but real huge bummer when he uh, when he does not. So yeah, what do you think, Bruce? Do you like? Do you ever pull your characters out of TK? Do you ever TK an opposing character? I gotta be honest, I've never done it. Never. TK'd. Honestly, yeah, like the chance that I'm gonna roll an attack just to place you is pretty low, but I've definitely TK'd somebody like that had you know like charge or running shot. Usually running shot is when I'm gonna TK. And, like, with that, like, Chase Jean Grey or that Medusa that can do a free TK for three, it's perfect for that kind of stuff. Fantastic. Look at this guy. This guy's just killing it. Can we just get a, can we get a hand? Because <laughs> no matter where you are, can we just... He's like, yeah! This guy's is awesome! Can we just do that? Like, if you're, like, on the treadmill right now, I want you to yell, yeah! Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. Freak people out. You're doing, oh, hey, I was just checking WrestleMania again. Looks like Kofi Kingston won. Wow, big shocker. Who would have seen that one coming? Good for him. He must have ate oh, his, uh, his bootios this morning. Yeah, I must have ate his bootios this morning. Had plenty of pancakes. Um, this just came to my mind. So just being on bootios and pancakes. I, I always try to have a really good 
good breakfast before a competitive tournament. I don't know why. I just like to do it. So I try to have either, and it's between the two, because these are my favorite, like, sort of cheat foods to have for breakfast instead of, like, eggs. That just sucks the soul out of me. Um, and it's chicken and waffles is my all-time favorite because it's awesome. It's, like, battered chicken, just tons of syrup and all sorts of stuff. I love that. Or I try to do, they don't have chicken and waffles, chocolate chip pancakes. And if they don't mm. have either, I just get really sad. So that is what I do before tournaments. Like, that's, like, one of my things, one of our rituals. Do you have anything like that, Simeon? Like, get your uh, breakfast of champions in? No, not even a little bit. Like, it is <laughs> – I am so, like, relaxed entering tournament mode that I don't even remember waking up. I'm just, like, all of a sudden I'm there, and I'm like, huh, okay then. And then I usually lose. Ah! So uh, don't take advice from me. You heard it here first, folks, from the Nebraska State champion. <laughs> so that's no, uh, have you tried making some fried eggs and then just dumping a ton of Frank's red hot sauce on there? Because that's that's my breakfast. That's your breakfast? I, I couldn't days. do it. Gonna be real with you. I'm so incredibly not tolerable of like spicy food. It's not my stomach, it's just it's just too hot. Like I physically can't eat spicy food. Not because they upset my stomach, but because I'm a huge wuss. That's a fact. That's like, that's something I've always told people behind your back, so. Oh, this guy! <laughs> like, someone gave me $5 to have the spiciest buffalo wild wing, whatever was on the menu, just to eat one. And I just tried to eat it one bite really fast, and I spent the next, like, 30 minutes in the bathroom with my mouth under just, like, the sink, just having cold water constantly. Yeah, I'm a huge baby. I'm sorry, guys. I If you thought for some reason I could just eat ghost chili peppers... And go to sleep and be like, ah, what a beautiful little before bed snack. And then like, no, I'll be up all night, get cold sweats. Like seriously, I'm not, I can't do spice at all. So, anyways, wow, what great, amazing Heroclix related talk that we're doing right now. Oh yeah, that is uh, that's pretty much the episode. If you have anything else you want to say, like at all, because we have no written in emails and whatnot, we don't have any other cool fun stuff to do in community. So if you have anything you want to say before I end this, go for it, my man. Um, all I've got to say is, uh, anyway, you better, you better be ready next weekend, Calder, because I'm coming for you. Okay. Is I'm coming. A, is that a challenge or is that a threat? Oh, it's a little bit of both. <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, so anyways, if I don't show up to Omaha next weekend, you'll know that I'm totally just too scared of Simeon. He's just That's, such, such a bad That will be the player. only reason don't show up. That's the only reason. There's I no cannot think of a single as, other thing. Like, anything else going on in my life but Heroclix, so why wouldn't no. I go? Because I'm a scaredy pants. That's totally it, guys. So, since it's the end of the episode, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys that you can find us on Podbean. You can find us on Twitter, at Dial H4. That's the number four, Heroclix, because Austin ruined that for us all those years ago. And we still have to reel back from his past mistake. Facebook page is Dial H4. Uh, we'll go to facebook.com slash dial h4 hero clicks itunes of course is where you can find us you can find us on youtube if you want to listen to us on your browser while you're inspecting collecting building hero clicks teams or you're doing whatnot on your browser time you can also go ahead and email us at dial h4 hero clicks at gmail.com that's f-o-r-e four spelt out it's only the twitter that austin ruined man we really hate austin don't we yeah it's just the worst so if you watch Devin adams high level hero clicks another shout out to him if you watch any of his videos and you see me in top eight and you're like wow that guy really sucks. He's just the worst. Email us about it. I want to hear how terrible I am. You can also join us on Patreon. I really want to do this uh, on Patreon really quick. Um, because Mr. Clixflix gives away stuff on Patreon, I just bought like the last Harley Quinn booster in the store, and I ended up getting a Lex Luthor God of Apocalypse, and I already have a Sexy Lexi. And because I love Sexy Lexi so much, I was thinking of just giving that away. So if you want to, this month in April, I'll be giving away a Sexy Lexi. I'm going to be doing a thing where all of our Patreon members get an entry, no matter what you donate. So if you just want to join for a buck really quick and get yourself in a raffle to, to get a to get a little sexy Lexi, a little God of Apocalypse. He's like 30-ish, 40 bucks, sort of like Chase Figures. That's pretty nice to get for free, I'd say. Not free. Like a minimum $1 something entry. So I think that's pretty good, guys. Just saying. So we're going to be giving that away. If you want to join our Patreon, I'm going to be rolling for it at the end of the month. And I'm going to try to do Patreon giveaways uh, every month as well too, just because uh, I'm gonna, I like to steal ideas and not have original ones. So I'm gonna steal that from Mr. Clicks and uh, just go ahead and do that. We'll do that live on the podcast and whatnot. So join our Patreon if you want stuff and you want like guaranteed stuff. You can go higher tiers, or 
You can go to our Redbubble store if you saw that sweet shirt I was rocking, the Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy Dial H shirt, designed by yours truly. You can go check it out on redbubble.com slash, it's like redbubble.com slash people slash dial H4, and it actually is the uh, <laughs> the number four, so actually I messed up there too. Slash four, hero clicks. So you can find us out there on Redbubble. Also, if you type in Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy in the search, you can find the shirt. So I think it's awesome. I think it's a sweet shirt that I designed. Just saying, it's pretty amazing. So if you want to buy that, go for it. Another reminder, if you haven't already skipped this little plug segment of the podcast, uh, Dial H is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. We can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Heroclix singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And for a time, it's not a limited time because they didn't tell us when the code was going to end. Use code DIAL5 at checkout. It's not a coupon code. It's just like, it is a coupon code, but it's not like, you can use your gift card code with the coupon code, which is really cool. So you can squeeze more into your gift card, which is great. Um, and they don't take up the same slot or whatever, so that's awesome. So coupon code DIAL5, D-I-A-L number five, gives you 5% off your order. It's not a bunch, but it's a start, because I really want to do more for you guys in the community with our cool stuffing sponsorship. I, I just want to give back as much as possible. I know Chris does too, because we just love you guys so much. So... That is it. That is the Dial H for Hero Clicks episode. Once again, I want to thank everybody for all the nice words that I was state champion. Yeah, I'm probably going to mention I'm state champion quite a few times in the future. Just saying, Chris isn't state champion. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, Simeon, any last words before I just end the podcast right here, right now? No, I, I don't think, uh, even though I don't have any last words, I'm going to say some words anyhow. So, uh, that's all I got. Yeah. Are those the, are those the cho- Dang it! Are those the words you've been chosen to be remembered by? Really, Simeon? Yeah, put that on my my epitaph. Well, you're here to hear it first, folks, and you're going to hear it here last. I hope you all have a great week, and that is Dial H for Hero Clicks. Go ahead, tune in next week when maybe Chris is back. I don't know. See you later, and happy trails.